can be seen also from orbit. Here we have a dancing Kerbal. He was making an animation of dancing, but not on camera. Oh, come on. Okay, so now we want to go and visit the moon arch. We said uh, this easter egg that's around, that's on the moon of, uh, of Kerbin. Uh, moon, actually here it's called Man, like M-U-N, so should be pronounced Man, I guess. And we, are gonna, we wanna go and visit that. So let's make sure that we have some of the important stuff on our spacecraft. Like some batteries. We wanna put some reaction control thrusters because we may as well need them. So let's put this reaction control fuel there. Hello everyone and welcome to this video, we are gonna go as I said in the Twitch stream to visit the Man Arch which is one of these structures that it's an easter egg that we found in Kerbal Space Program 1 but there is also a new version in KSP2. Therefore in this video as you can see here I'm speeding up the footage of me building a one crewed rocket to go to the Man and go and visit the Arch. I decided to install some solar arrays and it's time to put some reaction control thrusters to have a little bit more of control when we're gonna get closer to the arch which is gonna be very useful to land closer to it important is adding some struts since in Kerbal Space Program 2 we don't already have the auto strut feature therefore it's important to manually insert the strut piece and attach it to the two parts that we want to stick together so that I just gave the name to the rocket and I was trying to attach the landing legs but they would not attach and so I had to go and launch the vehicle and then come back in the vehicle assembly building to be able to finally attach them. I had some struggles here and there with some parts, I changed the solar arrays location, I changed the antenna and here I was trying to build the fairing and the game just would not let me. So at the moment in which I am recording the game which is uh, two uh, days after it's uh, its release there are still lots of bugs lots of problems so mainly uh, with the fairings while we are building uh, things and we're trying to stick them together but you know it's what we paid for it's a game in early access uh, i played the game on day one so i'm not gonna complain too much even if it can be annoying also considering the system in which i'm playing on which is uh, a laptop which doesn't meet the minimum requirements or at least it did not meet them at the moment of uh, the, the release of the first requirements therefore it can be uh, a little bit painful but you know um the, it, it is just uh, like that. So here I am adding some uh, boosters to my main rocket which has a skipper on the upper stage, a mainsail on the bottom stage, sticking to the old uh, days of Kerbal Space Program. I am strutting them and I'm not gonna put some fuel lines because we know that the fuel logic is one of the things that is most heavy on Kerbal. Therefore I'm just gonna put the two boosters to the side and I'm gonna use liquids and not solid rocket boosters because the smoke, the gas blue of solid rocket boosters are very heavy on the hardware and make the game lag even more. So yeah, the rocket is ready, check the staging and we are more or less ready for launch. Our staging should be checked and everything should be fine, so we are ready to take off and go to the moon to search for the moon arch. I don't understand what the 7 means. Is it the number of stages? Because it's not the... The number of the launch pad. As you may imagine throughout the entirety of the video there's gonna be various parts that I will speed up just to keep up the pace with the video and not bore you with these things and also not bore you with the uh, incredible 17-16 FPS gameplay as you can see here but there are gonna be some moments, some important moments, some important features of the mission that I'm gonna have to show you in real time. No, the boosters are gonna run out <laughs> later. Really. There you had it, this is one of those moments in which I realized that without having used the fuel lines to go from the boosters to the central core, since the uh, engines that I use on the sides are way more efficient and way less fuel consuming than the mainsail, they are gonna run out after of it, so I have to cap 
keep the boosters attached to the first stage of the rocket until it's the time to perform the circularization burn or at least the beginning of the circularization burn so I shut off the engines and then I got ready to relieve them at the apoapsis. So time warp to the apoapsis and there relight all the three engines and just two are gonna carry on a little bit longer. No, no, no. Oh. Ooh, okay. That was scary, I thought that it was not gonna detach. Why is it out of control? That was weird to say the least. There's our target down there, look at it. As you saw there, the respiration of uh, real-time uh, livestream Pietro, we had that kind of bug with the decoupler not detaching the two stages. It happened quite often to me, at least four or five times already, that detaching a poodle from a decoupler of the same size did not work. Also using the stock Kerbal X2, I guess it's called this time around, which is kind of annoying, but luckily enough, by wiggling a little bit the rocket around by trying to time warp or whatever I did, it got unlocked and so I could go on with the mission without having to go through the launch and to the redesign of the spacecraft to try and uh, solve the problems and here I am performing the maneuver to go to the to the moon so raising my apocenter until it reaches it. Slowly rising our apoapsis till it's gonna reach and intercept the sphere of influence of the moon of the moon. I should get used to say the moon thing is that in Italian, M-U-N is red, moon. So I always call it moon because I always thought about it in Italian. Since it's such a simple word to... Oh, okay, we're gonna impact, rip. Let's try and slow down a little bit with the RCS. I don't know how much it's gonna take using the RCS though. Ah, oh, there we go. Ah, not even that much. Okay, we did not overshoot. A lot. Okay, that's perfect. Cooper yaps his height. Can deploy our solar panels. Deploy, add also an antenna, extend the antenna, it's barely noticeable but it's there. Let's go into the celestial view. Time warp to the moon. Ah there, I said it again. Why does it turn around like that? Camera, what the hell? Ah! As per usual for a man mission, we did everything necessary to transfer there and now that we got closer and closer, we should slow down. Here I forgot, I got confused, I time warped a little bit more, but now burning retrograde puts me into orbit around it. And there should be an arch. Like around there. Oh, there it is, look at that. We wanna go there. Where's there? Yeah, it's more or less above this crater here. Down there. So let's... Get to the... Very center. <laughs> Interstellar. 
Hitting song request for Kerbal Space Program, I guess. Okay, I lowered the pre-ups a little bit too much. Better get back. I don't understand why everything is so dancey since we are doing nothing, but okay, game I guess. So to get there, it was a little bit further. Who built uh, the maneuver node? No one. No, no, wait, 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 what? what's going on? Why are the orbital points moving so much? I don't understand. Create a maneuver plan, and this is stupid, like I cannot see it from the other side of the planet. So I need to turn around, but then if I turn around, I don't see what I'm doing on the other side there. So I need to go on top. So I need to slow down. Eh, shit. I need to arrive a little bit from the north, because it was around here. How much delta is this maneuver? 140 meters per second, okay, so I can give even more. The thing is that I need also to be slowing down at the same time. What's the pretty upside side? It is 6 kilometers down there. Um, one kilometers like that. Yeah, because it was around here, so this should be fine. Let's time warp to the maneuver node. Here I did a new level error, I forgot, or I did not check actually because I knew that it was gonna happen, uh, and I lowered my Perrier apsis too much close to the surface of the man, and this allowed me just to time warp at times four, therefore let's skip uh, this part, let's speed it up again so that we can get to when it's gonna be finally the moment of performing the maneuver to change the inclination of our orbit and make it pass right above the man arch, which I know it's there because I saw it in my previous uh, man mission and therefore uh, I knew where I had to go. Something cool. <laughs> okay, so... So this maneuver is gonna do what we want it to do. Let's actually rise a little bit more the orbit so that we can time travel faster of course. We have no problems of delta V so Let me enter in the horizon camera. This should be a decent trajectory for what we want to do. Keep your eyes wide open. We should start seeing the moon arch quite soon. I expect it to be around here. Mm -mm -mm. Where is it? Oh, that's there. It's there, it's there.
look at that. So we need to slow down and burn a little bit in this direction that we're gonna start so that we're gonna start going there. Burning a little bit pointing north, which is exactly what we are doing. We still have plenty of fuel in this stage, plus an entire other stage. There it is. <coughs> First time I'm going to explore the moon arch in Kerba Space Program 2 gonna be able to check out if it is still uh, similar to the last iteration of the man arch that we saw in Kerbal Space Program 1 and it really looks like it is. We see that it has colored dots there that remember us what we saw in the latest <coughs> episode. of the development videos of Kerbal Space Program 2, I guess. Let's practically raise our horizontal speed. Actually burn a little bit more to the north, so we're gonna start going that direction. I guess it's a good time now to decouple this stage. Get away with the direction control system. The gear does not activate with G. Not not aboard, please. Gear activates with that thing, okay. Something weird just happened, we just got a weird kick. Trying to cancel out the horizontal velocity even more. And time warp down to the surface. We are 5 kilometers from the surface. Still going too much horizontal. Better burn a little more. To not overshoot the moon arch. kilometers of altitude uh, so parts of the moon arch broke off look at that in uh, KSP1 it was not completely revealed the entirety of the metal structure inside Less than two kilometers from the surface.
750 meters above ground. Going at 18 meters per second, getting closer and closer to the moon arch. Oh wow, look at this. It's amazing. It's gigantic. Forty meters from the ground, three meters per second of the velocity. Twenty meters we're kicking dust, three meters per second, two meters per second to touch down and there we are oh the legs bent a little bit more than expected but we are there we got to the moon and we got close to the moon arch and bob is ready to do his scientist duties and go and check it out look at this wow so cool Okay, no, I was about to stage, holy cow, no, no, no. What did we be? And so we finally got here. We have our little Kerbal Bob going around planting the Moon Arch 2, or Moon Arch 1, I don't remember how we call that flag. And we got to the Moon Arch. Uh, we see that it is evolved, it is changed with respect to what it was in Kerbal Space Program 1. In fact, uh, the first times that we were seeing the arches, they were completely made of rock with nothing inside to be seen. When they did the teaser for Kerbal Space Program 2, we saw a little bit of uh, the metallic structure behind and now instead we see it completely uh, with all the rocks bro broken down to the sides and it's just majestic, a very very cool easter egg, a must go to in Kerbal Space Program. This is such a cool idea, such a good map of the solar system. It's unfortunate that you cannot zoom out with uh, with plus. Oh, look at him! <laughs> you cannot zoom out with uh, the how they called. Plus and minus of the keyboard as it was in uh, as it was in KSP one. Well, we have Kerbal, Moho, Eve, Kerbi, Duna, Dress, Jewel, and Ilu. Each one in a further away orbit. And then, I don't know, this symbolizes the end of the Kerbalar system. Ah, maybe this cross is here in these circles represent the two other star systems that are gonna get introduced. So where is the moon arch, the man arch on the moon? Well, the man arch is exactly here, in the big plains of the man, 
close to this crater that you can see here and then much more precisely close to the smaller one near to this ridge we will be able to find it without any problems it's, it can be seen also from orbit here we have a dancing Kerbal <laughs> he was making an animation of dancing <laughs> but not on camera oh come on and there we go there we go can just hop down Ooh, no I was pushing down I was holding the wrong key and pushing down instead of pushing up okay I wanted to make some kind of good shot by having the Kerbal here in the middle starting like this oh no now rip also if I okay I need to push him further up ah Jesus hello Hello, hello, welcome. Pam, 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 our Kerbal. Okay, I have 2400 meters per second of Delta V. This is more than enough to get back to Kerbal, so I guess that we can also try and waste some of it to try and land on top of the Man Arch. Oh, we are kicking dust, we are kicking dust from the arch. Let's try and get in the middle for real though. Uh, no, 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 not too much, not too much. Oh, I'd better speed up a little bit the footage of me trying to land on top of the man arch because it was not easy so maneuvering a lander around the man in uh, its low gravity it's easier than maneuvering a lander in uh, Kerbin with the atmosphere and with a higher gravity but the problem is that uh, trying to land with uh, 20 fps so the game running a little bit slower than real time and with the slow response that the controls give it's still not a simple fit therefore it took me quite some time and i flew a little bit uh, around it before finally being able to land and there you have it Oh, we're there, we're there, we're there. Stay, stick it, stick it, don't flip, don't flip, don't flip. Let's go. <laughs> there we are. F5. Turn off, shut off that. Put away Rivatuna. And there we are, on top of the Man Arch. Let's go. And it's the time to go back to Kirby. And you know, full trust. And let's head to the east. And say bye bye to the moon arch. Circularization burn around the man. Right. 
and so while the Pietro of the livestream was creating the maneuver node, let's speed up a little bit this part here. What we wanna do to make sure to go back to Kerbin, it's burn in a way that our escape trajectory from the orbit of the moon, from its sphere of influence, it's gonna put us in a uh, direction that is retrograde with respect to the standard orbital uh, direction of the moon around Kerbin. Therefore, that is gonna slow us down with respect to it and lower our periapsis until it's about 30 kilometers from the ground of Kerbin it's gonna bring us to re-enter inside of the atmosphere without any problems. And that's what I did. And here let's time warp and now then go back to real time for the re-entry. Nice partial deployment. And we're gonna land at a cool 6.7 meters per second of speed, which is great. on a steep part of the mountain. This might not be so good. Clean. Good landing. Let's go. And like that, with this very clean landing, this mission comes to an end. The video comes to an end too. I hope that you enjoyed visiting the Man Arch in Kerbal Space Program 2 for the first time with me, and that you find some of the tips that I gave in the video useful to learn on how to do that yourselves. Uh, thank you so much for watching, I hope that you have a wonderful day and catch you next time in some other video. Bye bye!